Hey there, aspiring author. Do you worry about repetition in your fiction? Like maybe you accidentally explained the same thing in two different chapters, or maybe you even did it on purpose because you don't want your reader to forget a tiny detail of your story, but now you're worried that maybe they won't realize you did it on purpose and they'll just think you're an idiot. <laughs> if you've ever worried about this, then this is the podcast episode for you. There are actually three different types of repetition. There's kind of the good, the bad, and the ugly, right? Um, and we're going to talk about those, and we're going to talk about how you can use it to your advantage to actually enhance your story rather than be victimized by it. Okay, stay tuned. So I remember when I was just starting out as an author, I used to worry about this constantly. The idea of accidentally repeating something in my manuscript was just horrifying. It was mortifying. And I would go through the manuscript with a fine tooth comb trying to remove anything I might have said twice for any reason. Okay. And there were even a few times that my critique group, you know, me and the other authors who get together and help each other with our writing would find, you know, little repetitions maybe that I'd done because I mean, let's face it, when you're getting started, you are going to repeat yourself from time to time. It's just kind of an occupational hazard, you know, but it would just embarrass me. And I would think, man, I'm such an idiot. Why do I keep doing this? You know? And so then again, I'd be going through it with a fine tooth comb, trying to make sure that nothing was ever repeated. Now, I won't say that it's wrong to look for and take out accidental repetition, you know, that nothing wrong with that. And of course, if it's accidental, that's probably not a good thing. We'll get into that in just a minute. But what I didn't realize back then is that repetition is not necessarily a bad thing in fiction. Again, there's three different types, so it depends on what type you're talking about, but I'll get into that in a minute. And I do understand why we as authors think it's such a bad thing to repeat ourselves, right? Like I said, we feel like we're kind of being idiotic. You know, we, we, we feel like if we said something once, we shouldn't have to say it again. And if we do, we'll look like we're the ones who don't know what we're doing here, right? We feel like it's a failing on our part. Like we said it in one chapter and then forgot it the next chapter and said it again, right? And again, that's the accidental repetition going on. But here's the thing. Repetition is not bad in general. Think about this. Really think about it. The human brain needs repetition to remember things. When we were in, you know, whatever grade it was, first grade, second grade, and learned that one plus one equals two, we didn't hear it one time and remember it for the rest of our lives. We heard it over and over and over again. That's why our teachers had us practice math problems over and over and over again until our brains hurt, right? Because the repetition is what cements something into the human brain. So sometimes you need to repeat something in your story or your reader really truly is not going to remember it. Now think about the human template for storytelling, right? The human, the human brain latches on to patterns in order to identify with the story and the characters, in order to feel the emotions of that character, and in order to find the hope in the story as the character overcomes themselves in order to achieve victory. But think about what I said again. It latches on to the pattern of the story. And what is a pattern but repetition? The other thing I want to really point out in what I just said is that in order for it to be a good thing, there needs to be emotion involved. So once again, I'm going to talk about learning. If we are just learning something in order to memorize it for a test, we might repeat it over and over and over again. You know, the rote memorization, you know, trying to memorize the encyclopedia or something or our school textbook. And it does work in the short term. Sometimes if you do that, you will remember the answers for the test and you'll do well. But generally after the test, that just flies right out of your head, right? Why? Because there's no emotion in it. We don't really care. We're just learning it for the test to get the grade. On the other hand, most of us know and remember very clearly where we were when red letter events happened in our lives. So we'll say, we always remember exactly where we were when we heard about the Twin Towers falling, right? Why? Because there's emotion in that. And emotion enhances memory. So Repetition can be a good thing, but you've got to make sure to pair it with some sort of emotion. And understand, it doesn't have to be some sort of deep, um, tragic emotion. It can be comedy. You know, laughing is an emotion. It can be something that is just interesting to us that, you know, sparks any kind of interest or emotion, and then we will remember it. So the point is, once again, that not all repetition is bad in fiction. We're going to talk about the three types here, but the point is I want you to use repetition intentionally to enhance your story. It's one of the most powerful tools in your arsenal and most authors don't make use of it. Okay. I use repetition very, very intentionally in my story. 
stories. And I've even had a few where people told me it was the repetition that made the story. Like that's why they liked it. And usually that was because I paired it with some sort of emotion and they would say, They've said things like, when you repeated that last line one more time, just like, oh my gosh, that made the whole story for me. Okay, so repetition really can do that if you use it correctly. So let's talk about the three types of repetition really quickly. First, there is accidental repetition. Now, this is what's generally seen as the bad kind. It's when you explain something in one place and then explain it in another place because you don't realize you already did that. That's the kind of repetition you could probably do without. It's best to edit for it and make sure that you are not doing that on accident. And that really is the key. The difference between good repetition and bad repetition is if the author is doing it intentionally or not. Now, how do you edit for that kind of repetition? Um, when you're just self-editing, the thing I would suggest the most is to use a smartphone or some sort of AI um, software that will read it to you out loud and read it pretty quickly. Read it in a day or two so that you're getting the entire story start to finish in a relatively short period of time and then you will remember well enough and to notice when you've accidentally repeated yourself. Part of the problem is that we can go months writing our stories and then if we said something in the first chapter we don't actually remember that we wrote that in the first chapter and so we might write it again. But if we get the entire story quickly we will pick up on those repetitions. The second type of repetition is repetition for clarity. This is when you repeat something more than once so that your readers will not forget it. Now again, this is not a bad thing. It's something that maybe needs to be done sometimes if we're talking about a very subtle detail that they might not pick up on otherwise. This is one that's really hard to nail down how to do it well. The best thing I can tell you is do the same thing I said for the accidental, read through your story quickly, have it read to you, and then after that workshop it. Ask people very intentionally did that detail stand out to you? Do you even remember reading that or did you just glaze over it so that you know you can get a feel for whether or not you're putting enough emphasis on it? But again, it's not a bad thing to repeat something in order to make sure it stands out to the reader. Generally, you won't have to do this more than two or three times throughout the novel, but it, it just really depends on what it is. <clears throat> The third type of repetition is my favorite type, repetition for theme. This is when you purposely put in repetition strategically at various parts of the story in order to get a theme across. This is the one that I use really, really intentionally. I tend to not necessarily have all my themes nailed down before I start writing, but they come to me as I'm writing. And once I discover one of my themes, I write it down. And one of the things I do after my first draft is written is go back and pepper in that theme throughout the manuscript. This really can strengthen your story and it makes the whole manuscript, the story from start to end, feel very cohesive, right? Now here's the thing, you might say, okay, but how many times should I put you know, this repetition in? What is overkill, right? I have that in the title, what is really good repetition? Where's the balance between just bringing clarity to the reader and, you know, doing overkill to where you're hitting them over the head with it? Well, once again, um, when you are doing the second kind of repetition where you're just trying to emphasize something, I don't think you should do it more than two or three times. Now, of course, it's going to depend on what it is and you'll have to make a judgment call for your situation, but I don't think you need to do it more than two or three times and the reader should pick up on it without too much trouble. When you're doing repetition for theme, it's kind of a different monster. I actually have a hard time believing you could even overdo this. Um, if you do it a lot of times, it does start to feel like you're hitting them over the head with that. But depending on what kind of story you're telling, that's not necessarily a bad thing. If you're telling something comedic, if it's a satire, um, a really good example, probably the best example we have of this is The Princess Bride. There's a line that is repeated many, many times in that show, and you can all repeat it with me. My name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. Okay. I use this as, a, as an example a lot because they must have repeated that at least a dozen times in the movie, and nobody ever got sick of it. And what line is the most famous and popular line from that movie? It's that one. Why? because it was repeated, because it sticks in our head. Okay, it became a theme, it became a mantra for that character. And it was also a way to set up his story and basically tell us how the story was going to end, right? And it is the most satisfying storyline in that movie, okay? So this is what the power of repetition can do. Now, I'm not saying that you have to do exactly what Princess Bride did, of course, that was a comedy. You know, they did it on purpose. It was a little bit of a satire and it was supposed to be funny. So if you're not trying to be funny, maybe don't do it so many times. You have to decide what will work for your story. Um, but 
again, it's really hard to overdo this if you're being intentional about it, okay? But as a general rule, here's what I say. This is just the pattern of how the human mind works, and I guess it would be better to say how humans notice patterns. The first time you say something, they're not really going to notice anything about it because it was the first time you said it, you know? It's not a pattern yet. It's only happened once, so why would they? The second time you say it, it's going to seem familiar to them. They'll recognize it and be like, oh, didn't they say that once before? But they probably won't remember exactly when you said it. They'll just kind of, it'll sort of tickle their memory like they heard that once already. By the third time, they will notice it in a very conscious way. So I would say that if you want something to be put in repeatedly in order to emphasize something or you know, bring out a theme or use it as characterization, you know, whatever it is you're doing with that repetition, I would put it in at least three times so that the reader really, really notices it. Beyond that, it's completely up to you. And it's also going to depend on the length of your story. You know, you're going to put it in a lot more often in a 200,000 word high fantasy novel than you are in a 7,000 word short story, right? But even in the short story, I'd go with at least three times. So how can you go about, um, using repetition in your stories. Well, I can only tell you what works for me and then you can take it and make it your own. Um, I look for things as I'm writing that jump out at me as possible themes, possible characterizations, even just really profound lines. Sometimes I'll be writing dialogue and I'll be like, ah, that's good. I'm going to use that as a theme, you know? So look for things like that in your writing and you know, your critique groups can help you with that. If something jumps out at a critique group, at a, a member who, who is reading, whoever it is that's reading your novel for you, even if it's just a reader or your significant other or something, and they say, I really liked this part that's got my heart racing, or I had an emotional reaction to this, maybe it's happy, maybe it's sad, really dig into that. Because whatever created that emotional reaction in the reader, you need more of that. Use that as your theme. Repeat that throughout the novel, okay? So all I'm going to tell you to do is, number one, go over these types of repetition. Um, Look for them in your own novels. Have you used them before? Have you not? If not, where could you use them? And when you're wor working on your next manuscript, pay attention to those red letter moments that really give people an emotional reaction or that are very profound or that um, come across to you as a theme. And then consider using repetition to go back and pepper that in throughout your manuscript as a repeated theme, okay? You probably want to get it written first before you go back and do this because you just want to have the entire story start to finish so that you know how whatever you're going to repeat is going to affect the story, right? So it's something that I definitely recommend doing um, after the first draft is written. But if you can just do those things, you really can enhance your story a lot through repetition, okay? So once again, the three types are accidental repetition, which is not the good type, repetition uh, just to make sure that the reader notices something and that it's emphasized. I would do that probably two to three times throughout the book just to make sure. Or repetition in order to bring out theme of some kind. And that you can pretty much do as much as you want depending on the vibe you're going for, the genre you're going for, and just what you want for your story. All right. So I hope this has been a hel helpful discussion of repetition. It's one of my favorite things to play with when I'm writing my stories because to me that repetition, especially of something that is profound or does um, really exemplify the character or the character transformation or the story in some way is one of the most powerful ways to evoke emotion. You know, think about what I said about my short story. It would not have been as powerful, but I took a line that I had used throughout the story to represent the character and his beliefs and I repeated it at the end. And I had so many people tell me that's what made the story. It was just like really got him in the feels there at the end. Okay. So that's what repetition can do for your story if you use it correctly. All right. So that's what I have for you this week. Everyone have a great week of writing. I would love to hear how you're going to use repetition in your writing, uh, in the comments of wherever you're listening to this. And yeah, I will meet you back here. Same time, same place next week. Bye everyone.